Hey everybody, let's take a look at some really weird, really kind of funky Bulova Computrons. Um, there's plenty of videos on these watches online. Not a lot of videos uh, showcasing all three variants. Um, I've been wanting to make this for a while. Firstly, I don't really know why I have all three. I'm a little indecisive. Um, when these were new, full price, you know, I wouldn't have been able to get all three. Um, but, you know, if you hunt around, you could find them at a pretty good price, especially if you're finding them pre-owned. Um, right. These watches are a little different than your typical watch. Um, firstly, if you've seen these in their, like, promo photos, uh, the picture is like this, which is not at all what the watches look like when you're wearing them. Um, right. The, the photograph is taken from this angle. Um, meanwhile, when you wear them, they're more like this. Let's actually put one on. I'm wearing another Bulova I like. It's using uh, the Precisionist Movement. High accuracy quartz watch. Um, smooth sweeping second hand. Really cool. Um, I have a bunch of these. And uh, if you like Bulova, I think you should subscribe. I'm planning on making a video on uh, those watches in the near future. But yeah, back to the Computron. This watch is actually a reissue of a 1970s watch. Well, the gold one. Yeah, this watch, you don't look at it down like this. You look at it at an angle like here. It's a digital watch, but it's not an LCD watch, you know, like this Casio here. That's a liquid crystal display. These use LED displays, and they only display the time when you press a button. There we go. Now, on video, it looks like it's flickering on my screen, which is probably what you saw. In real life, it I don't see any flicker. Um, a little backstory on LED watches, in case you haven't been familiarized with them. The first digital watches in the early 70s were not liquid crystal. That technology didn't exist yet. Uh, the first quartz watches were analog, and there was kind of this push to, like, truly 100% computerize the watch, right? The analog quartz watch, like the back end, was digital quartz, but it still had gears. It still had a hand sw sweeping over the dial. So the digital LED watch became a very fashionable thing, a very expensive thing initially. They did not look like these watches. They had a display just like any other watch would, you know, like, like this. But it was red, and if you pressed a button here or you pressed a button here, you'd see the time. And the time would only display for a couple of seconds. Um, Bulova, not the only company that did this. A couple of companies did something strange. Rather than seeing the time here and needing to press the time, they had a watch in this sort of style. I've heard them called casket style because um, I guess it sort of looks like a casket. There's, there's a bunch of different types. Um, it doesn't really look like a casket to me. I've heard these called driver's watches because, well, I, I can't illustrate on this camera, but if you're holding a steering wheel, and you need to press a button to press the watch, you know, seeing the time on these is a two-handed thing. You need to rotate your hand, and you need to take the other hand off the steering wheel and, you know, press a button um, with those other LED watches. So they were kind of a pain. With a watch like this, this hand can stay in the steering wheel. You're, the display is staring right at you. You press the pusher, and you see it light up for a couple of seconds, and you see the time. Those watches came out. Um, I think the original Bulova Computron was like 1972, I want to say. There were other vendors, other manufacturers who came out with LED watches um, in sort of something like this. In fact, the first solar watch ever uh, made by a company called Rail, it was called the, um, the Synchronar 2100. Uh, that was the first solar watch ever, and it was an LED watch. There were a ton of companies making LED watches, like every company that was an electronics company made an LED watch but overwhelmingly they had like a display on the top like a you know like a standard watch and you pressed a, a button here and here it was only a handful of vendors that made it so it pointed towards you and not only does that make it more convenient I think it looks awesome when you have a watch like this um, this can be by your side pointing down and you never have to do the the flip to see the watch conversely though it's, you still have to use your non-dominant hand and press a button. And there's a reason to that, and that's power savings. Um, in the manual to this watch, um, it says how long the battery will last. It says it'll last two years. 
if you on average press it like once a day and when it lights up it lights up for like three seconds i did the math and if the battery if, if this was always on continuously um that time would display for about two hours that's all the juice that it has um and yeah obviously you don't want to change the watch battery every two hours even still if you look on the back of this that is one of those coin slots. You put a quarter or a nickel, I think, in there, and you turn it to replace the battery. Um, the early LED watches, they did kind of eat through batteries, so much so that it was kind of ridiculous to think you'd go to a watchmaker every time. So they made it easy to change on your own. I wish I had one of the original Computrons here. In fact, I've been delaying making this video for a long time, hoping to pick one of them up. Um, they... They didn't look like that. None of them had this blue display. That's part of this reissue. Um, so this blue display one, the model is the 96C139. Um, most of the originals look sort of like this. Gold with this like red display and, you know, press the pusher. And there we see that's military time. If you press it a second time, you see seconds. You press it a third time, you see the date. Um, N-T-O... It's like it's supposed to be the day. Am I just being silly and I don't know what? Oh, T2. Oh, yeah, you have a second time zone. Okay. I don't know. NTO. What is that? Does this display the same thing? Uh, that's the day of the... I don't know. I don't know. I wish I, I wish I looked up what that was before I started this video. Um, most of the vintage Computrons, I'm pretty sure they're like all gold. There may have been a silver one as well, but it did not have a blue display on it. Um, some of them looked like this with had these like these lines here, but some had like a checkerboard pattern. There were a couple of different varieties over the year. The split, the display looked a little different. These are like um, those standard seven segment displays. You know, there's like seven different lines that could fill in to make a number. The original LED watches of the 70s looked different. They had a bunch of tiny little dots that could arrange themselves differently. Um, but for the most part, these are a pretty faithful recreation. And they're nice, high quality. Um, they're going to be much more reliable than getting a vintage LED watch. I would have loved to pick up an original vintage one, but they're not super cheap. They're a couple hundred bucks, and most of them are in really kind of rough shape. It's hard to find one in good shape, so you know what? I felt like I would just pick up all three of the modern ones. My favorite one is actually this. It's black IP, and it comes on a silicone strap. And I don't love silicone, but I feel like that one piece of this does look really nice. So this one also knows it's 230. Um, it's, it's May 30th. That's accurate. It's NTO. Is that like it's a Monday now, but N70. That doesn't really... I don't know. Maybe that's supposed to look like M-O-N. I'll, I'll find out as soon as this is over. Maybe we'll put that in the description. This watch looks really cool. These, um, they're not big because I think they're trying to be accurate to their 1972 counterpoint. And that makes sense on a watch like this. You're not wearing a watch like this to be new and modern. You're wearing a watch like this to call back a different era. Um, again, I don't think there was ever a black IP version in the original. I think there was just gold and silver, and they always had this red kind of display. It's like a semi-transparent material that most light can't see through, so you can't see the circuitry behind them, but the LEDs are bright enough so you see those. And again, the original, the LEDs look different, um, came in different styles. Um, there's actually a couple of other variants of this that only recently came out. Um, Cit uh, not Citizen. Citizen owns Bulova, by the way. So, Bulova partnered with um, like an NFT company and released kind of a futuristic Matrix esque version of these. Uh, one of them is just like green accents. It's like silicone and has like green and black and just green accents over it. There's another one that has a window on the top with like a clear window and you could see the circuitry. Um, I haven't been able to find those for cheap, they're a couple hundred bucks each. And, you know, I'm not in the business of collecting every vintage and new Computron. I just, when these came out, I was like, you know what? I like rewarding companies for doing something a little weird, a little different. Um, these watches are probably not most people's everyday watch, you know? And 
I don't know how well they sold. I imagine they didn't expect to sell a billion of them, and I don't think they did. But to any bull of a collector out there, anyone that appreciates this time in history, I do think of all the LED watches ever made in the 70s, it's the Computron that's one of the coolest. Um, it did kind of start a modern revival. Bulova released these. Um, Hamilton re-released their LED watch. and They they were the company to make the first LED watch. The, it was called Pulsar at the time. They reissued theirs. Uh, Yema, the French company, they re-released a uh, digital LED watch. Um, I think, is it... I, don't know how to pronounce it it's Gerard Perrier or something they released a watch called the casquette it's like thousands of dollars a five thousand dollar led watch anyways these are not thousands they're just a couple hundred maybe they're cheaper than the vintage version and I think nicer um, I thought you know everyone likes dimensions you should know they're they're compact these are vintage sized that's 31 mils across uh, they, they wear bigger than a 31 millimeter watch because they're rectangular um, yeah, they don't, they don't at all feel like ladies' watches. Yeah, they're 40 mils long. Um, for reference, I have a 7.5-inch um, wrist, so slightly bigger than average wrist. And I think that's just really cool looking. Again, I, I, I do like the one on the band. I like how that just kind of integrates nice and smoothly. Um, whereas the one with the links, it looks like a tr triple link, but that's like one solid link. The blue and silver looks really cool too. Although blue LEDs, if you didn't know, um, I didn't I didn't start seeing them until like the late '90s. There was a long time in my life where I remember reading that uh, engineers are working to try to build the world's first blue LED or and white LED, and they they didn't exist. So red LED it was for the longest time. Yeah, and the sunlight you could kind of see the blue. You can actually see both of them. You can see the display. Let's see. Can I? Can I hit them up both? Yeah, totally different times. I don't really care enough to synchronize that. Yeah, let me get all three of them in a shot so you can see them together, and I think then that's it. Um, I would have loved to have one of the the new green ones. I would have loved to have a vintage one to compare, but um, somebody else can do that. My My job here is to just showcase these three options. Oh. Is, okay, challenge. Challenge accepted. Can I? <laughs> Can I press all three for the title image? Let's see. Uh, failure. Failure. Uh, why? Ah, there we go. Okay, somewhere in there, there's at least one frame of all of these lighting up. Really cool, really fun watch. Not an everyday watch, not a go-anywhere, do-anything kind of thing. But if you're already happy with your go-anywhere, do-anything watch, and you already have a dress watch, and you want something a little weirder, a little funkier, um, I think these are a great choice. Um, by the way, these are solid link, solid end. The, there's no like pusher release, it's just snap release. Um, I think that's vintage styled. In fact, the original was probably just stamped. But these are weird, they're funky, they're digital. These are the only LED digital watches I have. I have plenty of LCD. You know, at the time, that was a bit of an innovation. Um, eventually, I think people got tired of pressing a button and People found a way to make a continuous time display. In fact, early ads for LCD watches, that's what they said. Digital watch displays time continuously. These are not continuous, but it feels kind of special. You're wearing that on, give it a press, and take a quick glance at the time. This is how the profile pic of these should look. Like, this is what it looks like when you're wearing it. So, this is the only one I didn't put on. I think so. Yeah. All right, we're already somehow 15 minutes in, but that's the Bulova Computron. I'll include, like, the model numbers and everything down below. All righty. Thank you very much.